I went to Harbor Freight and I got this hammer. I found this for weighing the head of a hammer. Uh, set it on. And when it starts going back up, that's your approximate weight. Looks like the weight of the hammer without the handle is about the head is about 2.3 ounces. Uh, that's, I think, about right. The hammer is actually quite small. Uh, that's it on my hand. But now I'll get the poor man's anvil from my brother and I'll have something to work uh, the pins with. This is uh, that bent pin, and it's from the cut or the grinding, it's got a lip on it here. I'm going to try to sand that off. File that off, actually. I th thought maybe that uh, trying to straighten this pin would be a good way to test out this hammer. It is leaving a mark, but it's not really straightening much. I'm uh, going to try to get some of these marks from the vice grips out. Since this is only a test, I'm actually going to pound this through the stock. I don't care if I damage it. Well, it went through. I'm a little bit long. I want about a sixteenth on either side, so got to take a bit off there. This is uh, going really slow. I'm hardly even getting any flattening on the metal. I'm going to run grab a little bit heavier hammer just to start this uh, and then I'll go back to the lighter hammer after I get a little more movement on the metal. I'm going to use the end, the side end cuts here for this. Uh, just because with this short piece it'll be easier than trying to hold it and cut it with the coping saw. Got about a sixteenth. I didn't grind this edge, so it's a little rough, but I think I can still get something with that. This is uh, going really slow. I'm hardly even getting any flattening on the metal. I'm going to run grab a little bit heavier hammer just to start this. Uh, and then I'll go back to the lighter hammer after I get a little more movement on the metal. I ran over and raided uh, my mom's toolbox. Most of the tools in there she got from me. However, this one is an old hammer that was her grandfather's. Uh, it, she said that he used to use it for cobbling shoes. He used to uh, make 
his own kid's shoes in the early part of the 1900s. I'm going to see if I can do a little more work. Uh, this hammer has about a six ounce head, I think. And we'll see how that works versus this one with about a two ounce head, just for starters. I've just tightened the heads and just with that small amount the thread on heads are coming loose and they were so tight I couldn't get them loose with my fingers just a second ago. I guess this proves that I'll definitely have to start with a uh, well prepared end on the uh, rod. I don't like that head coming loose. It I'm going to try the heavier hammer just for a bit and see how it works. Well, I've got these pounded down and they feel fairly smooth. This one's a little proud, but I think this is the... Uh, end that wasn't as clean. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more pounds and then I'm going to try doing a little bit of filing to shape it to see if that pin will stay in there. I'm going to get a clamp. I had a little difficulty getting this clamped but I did now. I'm actually going to use the half round file to see about uh, filing this like I would be on the uh, utensils themselves, both the knife and the spatula. Again, had a hard time uh, getting that clamp on. Well, they said that I uh, needed a light touch with the hammer for peening this. I actually think uh, that this little bit heavier hammer works better because of the twist on heads on the lighter one. That affects the performance on it. Uh, however, I'm thinking a lighter touch on the file because the wood is softer than the brass. So the shaping has to be done very slowly and carefully. But it appears to be holding. And they did knives for a long time using only pins and peening them. And I really didn't want to go with the epoxy. Uh, even though in the long run it probably would have been cheaper. <coughs> I'm going to get out some sandpaper and do a little sanding see how that looks I don't think I'm gonna test any more because this is looking really good so far let's try some sandpaper and see how that helps how that looks I don't think I'm gonna turn this over as much problem as I'm having actually uh, clamping it 
uh, one side to the other. And just uh, mention, when I say they, I'm talking about uh, BBS uh, forums, which is a bulletin board service forums uh, that I found regarding knife making. Uh, I will give credit for that probably at the conclusion of this uh, project. But let's see about doing some sandpaper. I have a couple pieces here. This one's got a bunch of adhesive in it from doing the chair and table legs. Uh, this one is just torn. So I'm going to use it and see what I can do to this one side. This is only a hundred grit sandpaper. However, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit if I can. Gotta love this Nikon. The it's still showing the sanding marks in both the wood and on the brass. Although I think that's going to work. Uh, that fills feels really nice and it's gonna for any contouring I do on the handles uh, I think I'm gonna get be really successful <coughs> um, but yeah I, I I think it's gonna work out pretty good I am gonna turn this over uh, I'm not gonna record that it takes too long to do the clamps uh, and I might get out a finer sandpaper just to see how it looks uh, with maybe a 220. Well, I got out some finer paper. I'm going to give this a few passes just to see how it looks. I actually plan to go to a 400, maybe a 600. However, being a kitchen knife, this really doesn't need to have a glass finish. So I may stop at the 220 if it looks okay. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, I may still go to a 400 just because I'm seeing the sand marks on the brass itself. But so far, this the wood itself is looking pretty good, although it is porous. I may go finer. But I think that will definitely be a workable solution uh, and for a test, this has definitely worked. I got this stock flipped. I'm going to do a little more shaping with the half round file just because I can. And then I'm going to try the sandpaper on it. Well, so far I think that test painting went really well. This feels really good to me, uh, but there is showing along the grains there, the more porous uh, part of the wood, and that should be taken out with a finer paper. I don't feel it, but I can see it. I'm not noticing any variation between the brass and the wood. So I'm, it's uh, tooling evenly. I am noticing some tool marks on the brass, even from this fine sandpaper. And I, this is a learning process for me. I'm not a professional knife maker. I'm just doing this to see if I can and to prove that I can. Uh, however, I remembered, <laughs> I have worked with wood a bit, but, uh, 
I want to go with the grain to get the best finish with the sanding and so I did do it uh, parallel to the grain instead of perpendicular uh, but so far I'm really liking the fill of that uh, and going slowly to do these uh, the countersink on these other holes uh, actually worked quite well I'm only doing about a turn and a half to two turns and then back turning a, about a half turn to get what would be in metal burrs in the wood I don't know what to call it burrs I guess uh, however for the painting itself because the small hammer has these heads that they untwist uh, it's not getting as good of a as solid of a contact as I'd like and I think I'm going to use this I don't know what it is I've always called it a cobbler's hammer because that's what uh, my great grandfather used it for I know there's another name for it and I can't remember what it is offhand uh, but so far the test peen was successful and as long as I can shape the handles well after I get the pins into them I think that it'll definitely hold I guess I could try well that's not coming out and it's definitely larger than the original pin uh, by a considerable amount I don't think I need to try forcing that pin out it I think will definitely hold if you like thumbs up subscribe and please feel free to share